What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing my top four hardest workouts. Now these aren't literally the hardest workouts. You can always make a harder workout by doing an extra rep, an extra sprint. But these are basically the four really tough workouts that if you see me doing on Strava, you know there must be something important coming up on my racing calendar. So let's jump over to Strava and I'm going to walk you through them. The first one is approximately 10 by 5 minutes at about 106% of threshold with three and a half minutes off in between reps. So in Sydney, these are at, I do these at Taronga Zoo, so 10 Tarongas. Let's have a quick look through. A couple of photos We've got Chris Miller here in the, the pink Rafa Pro Team training jersey. I do these on the gravel bike. On this particular day, it was a wet day. Um, so gravel bike slows me down, makes that climb a little bit longer. Uh, another wet photo here. But let's go and have a look at the session. So it's 10 repeats at 106% of threshold roughly and i'm trying to space these out evenly so it's not about going out and blowing the first three out of the water and then dying in the ass it's about trying to keep the average power for each effort exactly the same so the last effort you are you are you've got your music full full blast you're really your legs are absolutely cooked really struggling through it so i'll take a lap let's see what the entire effort looks like overall and then we'll go in down to each of the efforts so the entire session is about an hour and 20 minutes long doing the 10 repeats. And then it's, I, I say 10 by five, but at Taronga, it's somewhere around 4.45 to 4.30. So um, 3.99 watts, uh, regular cadence or 90 RPM. And then these are the repeats here. So 4.14 watts, 4.21 watts, 4.02 watts. And very steady as well. I'm lucky that Taronga is a very consistent 4 to 5% gradient. So it kind of looks like I'm in erg mode, but that's just from, from years of um, practicing. So 412 watts, 423 watts, 415 watts, 420 watts. And by this stage, I'm, I'm really struggling with motivation. 410 watts, last rep, 430, open it up, um, 88 RPM, still there. And that's the overall session. So rest periods here, we're looking at three and a half to four minutes, depending on how fast I go down the hill. Um, so that's the session there. It's a really tough one. It's, it's mentally as well. The, the trick with this that I use is don't go straight into your music on your first rep because you're going to lose all your motivation. What I like to do is I either do, I might do two or three reps with no music. Then I'll go for the next three or four reps, have music in, but maybe just one headphone or just at a low volume. And then for the last three or four reps, I've got the music in, really loud, full blast, just to just to use, I find music a really good tool to utilize to get through a tough session. So if you follow me on Strava and I'm over doing heaps of Taronga reps, this is one of the sessions I really like and find has a good benefit for me. Alrighty, next session, we've got the two hour sweet spot session. This is really simple. It's I go into Centennial Park and I do a two hour effort at sweet spot, which for me, in this session was about 91%. So my goal is to try and do 90, 91% of FTP for two hours, which is extremely difficult. Like if you're kind of like doing calculating numbers yourself, like what, like how would I do 91% flat? And that's not normalized, that's flat average for two hours. Like how, like how would I do that? Yes, it's extremely difficult. I, I, this is actually, I haven't done this one for a while. Now for me, this limit is sort of 90 minutes because I'm a little bit soft. This, I think this session was back in 2017 or 2018, but I mean, I did it. I've got the two, I've got the lap here. So two hours, this was actually the best one I ever did. So keep that in mind. This is my best ever two hour performance. Um, 373 flat average, 41.6 K an hour, um, 92 RPM. So the thing here, the speed, I mean, that's still pretty fast, but I'm not, I'm not aero in this. I'm not trying to go fast. I'm just trying to do as much power as possible for the two hours. Uh, really head cracking. This is a game. This is probably one you're going to want to caffeinate for. So this is one I would go in. This is where I'd have an extra coffee before I leave home. Um, fueling is really important in this. Like, you, there's no way you're going to be doing two hours at sweet spot if you're not getting in a lot of carbs. So this is, I might go through three or four gels throughout this, just this two hour effort, if not more. Um, and yeah, like just very difficult, but has a very, very, very strong training stimulus. Um, so yeah, it's probably probably not one you're going to see me doing anytime soon, but uh, very effective, very tough. Next one, we've got a VO2. It's a VO2 max workout. Now, it doesn't look that hard on paper. It's really short. So it's the 3015s, those Ronestad, those really popular 30, 30 seconds on, 15 seconds off intervals. 
Uh, this example here, I, I DNF'd. So this was a key session I did before the uh, time trial that I got third at um, in December 2020 at the, the national tour. Um, so really, really strong stimulus VO2 max workout, but this sucks. So this is actually one I do on the trainer. So I'll walk you through it now. Uh, now you can see it's meant to be three sets and I, I got two, two intervals into the, into the last set and just, I blew. I just could not, I could not keep going. So failed this one. Um, but let's have a look at it. So it's sets of 13, 30 seconds off, 15 seconds, 30 seconds on, 15 seconds off. So each block is nine and a half minutes and doing them at about, I've got the percentage here, around 130% of FTP. Now that'll change depending on what your maximal aerobic power is compared to your threshold, but around 130% is a bit of a guide. For the on-period, off-period is just as easy as you want, basically freewheeling, really light pedaling. Um, I do this on the trainer because it's a little easier to pace. It's quite difficult to do on the road because you, you, you slow down a lot in the 15 seconds off, then you're constantly changing gear. So I find it's a, it's a good one for the trainer, but not definitely not in erg mode. This is one I'll, I'll use workout mode on Zwift. So if I bring up that photo, you can see this is, I do it in, um, I do do it in workout mode, but erg mode's off. Um, and I just pick a, a, pick a flat, flat road. Although I think on Zwift, it doesn't matter. I think if you're in a workout, it doesn't matter if you're going up a hill, it'll just keep the resistance the same. Anyway, um, yeah, so flat road, using the gears to, to get the power out. But this is really, uh, I, I dread this session. Like I do it as a maximal effort. Um, so basically trying to empty the tank after each set, but without completely dying. And then the rest period in between is only three minutes, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so three minutes recovery in between sets, which isn't much. A really, really tough session. This one I didn't finish, which is a bit of a shame. But a very, very strong stimulus at approving your power between sort of four to ten minute um, output. A really, really good session to do. Final session here. It's a strength endurance climbing session. This is a longer one. So this is a ride I'll do in Sydney. Uh, I'll go out to do, if you're in Sydney, it's, I'll do it on like a gorgeous ride through Bobbin Head, maybe Mount White or, or Brooklyn Climb. And what I'm doing is I'm going and doing an endurance ride, but up each of the climbs, I'm doing an effort at 100% of FTP, so around threshold, but at a low cadence between, uh, what are my cadences? I had them here. So between 45 and 55 RPM up the climb. So the climbs for me are around eight minutes long. So it's basically four hours endurance with four eight minute efforts at threshold, but between 45 and 55 RPM, which is extremely difficult. Like if you did that at a normal cadence, I mean, that would still be a pretty solid session. You know, four hours with four by eight at threshold is, is already a pretty solid session. But doing this at the low cadence is a killer. Like really good for your fatigue resistance. I find it, I find I respond really well to low cadence training. It really boosts my threshold. And it's also fun to do. Like we've all gone and done threshold repeats over and over again. Doing it with low cadence is, I, I do find it quite interesting. So let's have a quick look through it. This one, a couple of flicks here. We've got Leo in the background, at the Asian cyclist on Instagram, rocking the Oakleys. Um, this was in 2020, You've got Chris there. So let's have a look at the actual session. Let's see where this one. So four hours, 125K, 32K in our average speed. So still moving. Um, and so this one was up through Bob and Head was the first climb. So if I look at the laps here, we've got, at this time, my threshold was probably 390 watts. Um, so we got eight and a half minutes, 390 watts at 44 RPM. D really, really difficult, really tough. Uh, next effort up Mount White was 408 watts at 53 RPM. So that's a, probably a little slightly above, a couple of percent above FTP. Um, cadence up a little bit from the last one. Basically, get to the top, turn around, drop back down. Then I do the next climb up Brooklyn. A little bit longer, so nine and a half minutes at 398 watts, 53 RPM. By this stage, like this low cadence stuff really drains your legs. Like at this point, I'm already feeling buggered. I'm thinking, am I really going to do one more? It's really mentally is tough. And then the last one, like I was highly motivated. When was this? What date was this? I must have had, I must have been really motivated because I've, I've done a longer one at the end. So this was May 2020. So I think this was up around the time we had some uh, like Grafton to Inverell races in Australia. 
uh, National Road Series race, 220K. Um, so then the last one here, I've gone bobbin head, but I've actually continued. You can see here the speed picks up after the climb. So this is the climb here, but I've continued all the way to the shops. Uh, there's an IGA up here, which I've, I think I've gone to. So 12 and a half minutes, 372. So maybe 20 watts below threshold, but still cadence 57 RPM. So extended that one out a bit longer. Uh, so that's really emptying the tank on this one. Not emptying the tank in terms of intensity. Like it's not that real leg burning, throat sort of lung burning. It's just a really dead drain feeling because you've been riding at that lower cadence. So I find I, I respond really well to this type of training. If I do this session for a few weeks in a row, I'll, I will see a boost in my, in my FTP. Um, so that's, that's the fourth one there. If you see me out doing some low cadence gorges, um, yeah, I must be training for something pretty hard because that's, that's a good session there. So there we go. Hope you found that video interesting. Uh, feel free, if you want to follow what I'm doing, jump over to my Strava and you can follow along. Um, and feel free to go and repeat some of these sessions yourself. I've gave, given the percentages there. So give them a shot if you dare. And I'll catch you in the next video.